it's I made up a new segment for the newscast. I'm calling it Temple Update Time or Tut, which if I had thought about it, I would have gotten the Steve Martin King Tut, do, 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 you know, a Tut. Or it's tut, Tut, it looks like rain. That's right. Tut, Tut. It could be Winnie the Pooh too. Okay. Because I realize I have three or four updates for the various things that are going on with temples. And we haven't put out an episode on Mormonish for a while because everything's so in flux with what's happening with the temples. We keep waiting for like something definitive, but there's all these little things that are happening. So I know you guys will be interested in this. Now, Bakersfield, California is something that we have not covered very much on our episodes because they're kind of running their own show kind of privately. You know, they have a PR rep, they have a lawyer, they're definitely working it. You know, they're definitely doing it, but they're at the point where they're having community meetings. So we'll go over this very quick article from Bakersfield. It says um, a group of residents in West Bakerfield are pushing back against the design of a proposed temple from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that they say would be incongruent with the community. I feel like everyone should just raise their hand when they hear phrases that they've heard before, right? From some of these other cities. <laughs> I, I feel, feel like, like I'm if just... it's going to be congruent with the Bakersfield, California community, they should just build it with the, um, I don't know, the graffiti already spray painted on yeah. the walls. That's possible. Then no it would be congruent. any of our viewers or listeners from, from that Baker. is a horrible thing. I'm so yeah. sorry. Bakersfield, I'm sure it's a beautiful city and I, I can't wait to go you there know, without Bill to keep you under control. Cause goodness, <laughs> I can't do it. I mean, good. it's RFM unleashed and unbridled. That's right. So anyway, I just read this. I thought I'm getting deja vu here again. This all happened last Wednesday. So a meeting was held Wednesday evening at the Brighton park clubhouse because this temple is going to be built right next to a retirement community of, you know, like single story houses. So of course these people in this retirement community are like, what? And I've seen pictures, they've done renderings of what this steeple will look like against their one story houses. It's absolutely ridiculous or incongruent as they mentioned. So the meeting is held Wednesday night and more than 50 residents gathered to hear an update on the effort to see the design of the temple change. So we recognize where they are in the process. They're aware of what the plan is now. They're saying, this is not going to work. Let's have some meetings with the church, with some of the, the community leaders. It, each of these temples is in a different phase. And you can just, you can just predict, like clockwork, what's going to happen. So at issue for the residents is not the temple itself. I feel like we need to raise our hand again because we hear this in every city that we deal with, which they say would be welcome. It's the height and the bright, which I thought was great. I had not heard it said that way before, the height and the bright. It's kind of snappy, maybe Kulch in the chat. You can make some kind of a song or something to that, height and the bright, um, that they worry would come from the proposed 123-foot steeple at the center of the construction. So um, if they had come in with a 60-foot height limit, they could have broken ground years ago. I feel like we need to raise our hand again, said Greg Brott, a member of the ad hoc committee. All we're saying is, let's just raise our hand ahead of time here. Please be within the code and you can start building tomorrow. Okay. These words could have come out of the mouths of anyone in Fairview, anyone I in Vegas. They did. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It did. Anybody in Heber, anybody in Cody, all these citizens independently take stock of the situation and come up with the same conclusion and try to do the same things to protect their towns. Uh, but the church maintains that the steeple is an important feature of the temple, which are special locations used for specific religious observance. The, let's see, am I ahead of myself? Yes. Um, uh, the LDS population continues to expand in California. Right now, the closest oh, temple- Oh, come on now. I, well, I know. I it didn't raise not. my hand there, although I should have because I say that in every town. I don't even I'll, think that's true. Who would who would say such a an outrageous lie? Well, in all these oh, towns, Meryl Dibble. I keep oh, <laughs> I keep getting people to take screenshots of the availability of open seats in temple sessions in all the nearby mm -hmm. temples, and it's like astronomical, like forty seats, thirty nine seats, fifty seats. It's like, and then everybody rebuts me and says, "Yeah, but there are walk ins." Are there, though, are there 50 people walking in that aren't making an appointment? I don't think so. so <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, yeah. Oh, and I've heard we, reports, too, from people who are in places to know that they yeah. are, these temples are not fully used. And uh, actually, you have to, like, schedule. You have yep. to schedule something because they only have mm -hmm. maybe a couple of sessions yep. a day, if you're lucky. Yeah. 
By the way, for those who don't know, back when I joined the church back in 70, I went to the temple first time in 79. I've been to the temple a few times in my life. And it used to be that you didn't have to look when the sessions were starting. I don't know. Did anybody look at that? No, you just went to the temple yeah. and you would go through what you needed to go through to get your temple whites on and you'd uh, go into the chapel and you would just wait because it just happened like clockwork. Like every 15 minutes, they take out another row of people from the chapel, head them out to the endowment rooms. And it was a thriving, I almost said business, but it was a thriving uh, activity going on in the temple. I don't, it's not like that anymore. Mm -mm. So it's, um, it's just a strange situation where the church is pretending that the population of active temple going uh, Mormons is increasing. And so we're building all of these obnoxiously, uh, what, what was it? The height and the, the bright height and the bright. That's it. Yeah. Like temples, a billboard <laughs> temples, uh, to accommodate the members when really that's not the case. All they're doing is infuriating the neighbors. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. And and the people that I feel more sorry for are the people that have to staff these temples and pull double shifts, triple shifts. I mean, already, as I've said before, in a lot of temples in Utah where they're so close together, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, a new temple mm -hmm. opens and they're taking the workers from the one 20 miles away and they're shuffling them around, but it's still the same people. I know they're calling younger people now to work in the temple and they're making it a mission to go somewhere and serve in the temple temple. Mm -hmm. But I know that these people are strapped. I know that leaders are frustrated trying to, I can just picture this giant whiteboard, right? And they're trying to, those people can go there. And, and you see these things that are leaked letters. We need 1200 people to fill some shifts. 1200 people. You don't think that state presidents aren't laying in bed at night going, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? You know? And to me, it impacts those people who a lot of them all are older. Somebody reached out to me last week and I'll try to keep the story vague. Um, but they had a relative who was a temple worker. And it's a temple where one temple in the area has closed down. So a lot of people are being funneled closed down just for renovation, funneled to this temple. So this one temple that this person works at is very, very busy. And once a year, I think it was once a year, this person's whole family gets together for this breakfast, like extended family. It's a big deal. It's a huge tradition. And this relative asked, could I miss my shift? It's like a once a year, you know, getting together for a meal with extended family. He was not allowed to miss. He was not allowed to not go to his temple shift to be with his actual family on earth. <laughs> he had to keep the shift because there was nobody that could fill in. So that's isn't what I'm talking that, about. Isn't it funny that Mormons sometimes, like this person in any way, treats a temple shift like they're an employee. Yeah. Yes, that's why I said when you say he can't miss. Fire he them yeah, he could walk don't... out. Yeah, he could, but he didn't, and they won't. And and that's what I, I see is that wow. sometimes these, you know, stretching so thin, these older people, and they're missing their real life, you know, their grandkids and things like that. So I don't know. There's just a lot to it. But we all, I think, know the reasons behind it. So, And I had um, interrupted you when you started that lie by Meryl Dibble. I apologize. Yeah. I mean, the LDS have to find population. It yep. Yep. No, I'm going to find it. Yes. The LDS population continues to expand in California. That sent us down that rabbit hole. You know, without Bill here with his calm, quiet presence and that kind of eyebrow that he puts up when we're taking too long and just rattling on and on. We're just, we're a pack of hyenas. I, <laughs> we a need you, Bill. <laughs> we're a pack. We're two. <laughs> a dual, a, a duo of hyenas, something. Anyway, Bill keeps us grounded. We miss you, Bill. We'll see you next week. Okay. Uh, so right now the closest temples are Fresno and Los Angeles, said Merrill Dibble, um, stake president for the LDS Church in Bakersfield. The temple would be a great blessing to so many of us that live here. You know, and we do hear that everywhere, that we need one closer. Proximity is a big deal. Uh, Dibble <laughs> said the church. Now, this part is very strange. And mm -hmm. I'm not raising my hand here because I honestly can't explain it. Dibble said the church was intending to seek approval for the temple as designed, but will ultimately follow what the city allows. Another lie. It's, it's ultimately up to the city to decide and will follow their guidance. Dibble said. That's yeah. not even true. Yes, it's not even true. He and knows I would it's like not to... true, even as he says it. Uh, Come on, Dibble. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, Dibble, how dare you dabble in these falsehoods? That's what I say. <laughs> so 
But again, I, he's saying that, you know, for, to pacify the residents. But if any of them just want to do a Google search, please, Fairview, Lone Mountain, Heber, Cody, find out what's really going on. You know and what's going to happen when they get when they get to the city and the city says, OK, if you build it 60 feet high, yeah. you can start, but not with this. Do you know how tall the steeple is? Um, it's 123. So again, all of these are proportional. You know, I mean, obviously you've got Lone Mountain, the 200 and like 18, that's bigger than this, but the proportion there and just, just what it is in that community, you have to kind of take it case by case. And well, it's funny because a lot of the temples we deal with, like Lone Mountain says, I take Cody. That sounds great. Right. And Fairview says, I take Bakersfield. Let's hmm, do that. You know, so right? it really is kind of a perspective. So yeah, I feel but, like they're just saying that. To, and we've seen this before. They kind of appease the people. They'll mm -hmm. take it before planning and zoning. They'll take it before the town council. If it doesn't go that way, then the threats of the lawsuits will start. And then you're kind of in the next phase. I predict that in a future city council meeting in Bakersfield, uh, those who are against the temple as it is proposed will quote Dibble, State President Dibble right here. And then the church lawyers will get up and say, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he doesn't really, he didn't speak for us, you know. Didn't we have something like that in um, Texas? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because all the residents and the people that are kind of spearheading the residents group eventually realize that nobody who's a decision maker is sent to meet with them at all. Mm -hmm. And some of the town councils are like, that's insulting. Why would you not send someone that can actually make a decision? They're all just representatives. So it's very easy to do what you just said where finally some of the bigger wigs will come in and they'll say, well, you know, that person was speaking as a man, speaking as mm -hmm. a president Dibble. Speaking and as a Dibble. <laughs> I was going to say speaking as a Dibble, but I thought that I didn't. I this is the, you know what this is, don't you? <laughs> it's the trouble with Dibbles. <laughs> oh, if I start laughing, I'm going to snort laugh and you'll you never let make me a meme. So I'm going to make a meme. I'm going to do it, which is a Star Trek pun. Ooh, see, now we're left uncensored to make Star Trek jokes back and forth. We've got to control ourselves. Seriously, we've got to rein this back in. Okay. So anyway, that's where it stands in Bakersfield, and we will see what happens next. So interestingly, this is great. I'm calling this, it ain't over till the fat cowboy sings. Hopefully you've all heard that phrase, the fat lady sings. So this mm. is an update from Cody, and we did cover this last week, if you remember, the stealth groundbreaking, or I think that was mm -hmm. two weeks ago maybe, and construction has started. And then I got this very nice announcement from uh, my friends on the Preserve Our Cody Neighborhood Committee, and they said, update. Here's an update from a couple days ago, and it says, on September 27th, uh, the covert LDS temple groundbreaking scene was interesting to witness. From the temporary grass, the potted trees, the dignitary chairs for the few people attending, surrounded by a wagon train circle of vehicles, complete with apparent security forces to watch. We do not understand the secrecy or the need for security. The LDS is taking a substantial risk by starting its $41 million, and that's a dollar that amount that the church has put on this, the church themselves, even though this temple, which is a pop-up temple like others in the area, the other temples don't cost this much. The church has said this one is $41 million, um, the commercial construction project in this rural residential neighborhood zone. What happens if the Wyoming Supreme Court rules in Preserva Cody neighborhood's favor, placing their $41 million capital investment at risk? Exactly. And everyone should go, what? What do you mean the Wyoming Supreme Court? And that's exactly right. Next announcement is the Wyoming Supreme Court has accepted our case and court proceedings continue as the matter moves from district court to the Wyoming Supreme Court. Preserve our Kobe neighborhood remains fully committed to our rightful appeal before the Wyoming Supreme Court. So that's news right there. It's it's huge news. The we court. thought that was dead in the water. Yeah, and everybody does. I point to Heber, where just three or four days after the announcement in conference, they did a big groundbreaking. Everybody was there, shovels in the ground. People on the county commission who had to change all the zoning had their shovels in the ground too. And everyone assumed it's over, it's done. I did too. Here it is two, I think, yeah, almost two years later. And, you know, there's some interesting things going on in Heber. It's not really happening. I've been out okay. there to that lot, grown over by weeds. No construction, you because know. Because they put the shovels in the ground and water started bubbling up. Yeah, that well, yeah, like like what is it? Texas tea, right? It's like the Beverly Hillbillies. That's exactly it. But this was water. This isn't such a good thing through. to have bubbling up. 
Yeah. You know, I'm not saying anything yet, but Mormonish has been podcasting about the millions of gallons that need to be pumped out initially and then daily from that location. And, you know, we had some engineers on some information. We had some of the residents trying to go to the town, explain it. And I feel like maybe, maybe there's something going on there, but we'll wait till we get some definitive news. But what I'm trying to say is a groundbreaking doesn't necessarily mean that a temple is happening forthwith. So anyway, that's Cody and that's happy news for them. Now we will go on to fair. By the way, view. Rebecca. Yes. I apologize. Um, I know you're quite conversant with this, so I don't feel bad about asking you the question. What's going on with the Wyoming Supreme Court? Oh, and again, I'm not conversant with this because this is something that you and Colby, who I know I sent this information to Colby and I think I haven't sent it to you yet, but something did in very simplistic terms, something did change wherein the Wyoming Supreme Court looked back at different decisions they had made um, about how town councils and planning and zoning operate and their authority to make decisions. And they realized that they may have looked at things incorrectly and then mm. ruled based on that incorrect assumption that they had. So they are now in the process of revisiting decisions that were made um, with questions of planning and zoning. You know, like people come to the court and say, the PNZ board said this, and we said this, in the past, the Wyoming Supreme Court voted one way, but now they're going, I'm not sure if that was correct. We need to retry these cases. So that's very simplistic. Hopefully Colby in the chat, if he read what I sent him, can make it more clear. But basically, they're just looking at things a little differently. And this this will make them look at the Preserve Our Cody neighborhood lawsuit differently, too. So I can hope because that was really a travesty. I mean, I know we podcasted on this before, but think about this. You get a note on your front door that says a temple's coming. You go a week later, I think a week or so later to a meeting at a stake center and you see a drawing. According to how it is now, within nine days when the planning and zoning board met, you would have had to get together a coalition, launch a lawsuit, raise the nine days. You don't even know what's happening or what what it looks like. It, it's just, it's almost impossible for these towns unless they're watching ahead of time, like hear the announcement in conference and start watching. It's impossible to mobilize that quickly, which is why Fairview is so amazing and also Low Mountain because they really did. So this is what's going on with Fairview. If you remember um, the town council voted no, no temple, come back, please, with a design that meets our codes and meets our zoning. And the church went away and we have not heard from them. Some citizens in Allen, Texas, launched a lawsuit claiming that their rights to worship and their religious freedom had been trampled on because they had to drive. You did the whole schematic, RFM. Remember yes. that? 19 minutes. To, what um, was it again? The one in Dallas. Yeah. They have to drive like 17 extra minutes or something. Yeah. A lot. That's exactly right. So anyway, this lawsuit is pending out there. They received a notification of this lawsuit, but nothing's really happened. Uh, but we do know that the LDS Church's lawsuit is yeah, it's inevitable. And so the my recollection is, is that the um, the time limit for filing a lawsuit or a notice is a is a year. Yep. It's a long time. That's right. So I, I'm, I'm sure there's some things going on behind the scenes where maybe there's still some pressures you know, that are be put, being put on the town council. Again, a town council of volunteers. This is a teeny tiny town. I can't express this to you. Any of you that live in a small town, imagine what this would be like, honestly. I feel like it probably has a gridlock as far as the town being able to accomplish anything else. So uh, anticipating this lawsuit from this giant corporation, they have launched, um, they have launched a fundraising arm. Uh, to see if they can gather some funds to help support the town. And I put the, I think right here, I put this up if anyone's interested. It's fairviewtexas.givingfuel.com slash zoning dash defense dash fund. And I'll put this, I'll re-put these in the show notes. I didn't think about it yet. You can also, you can just Google um, givefuelifink.com and it'll come up. So anyway, so here's the description of the fund. It says this fund was created by the town of Fairview at the request of town residents and others because of potential litigation between our small community and the giant wealthy Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS. Put simply, the LDS Church is attempting to force the town to accept a temple and steeple that would dominate the town due to its size and is totally out of proportion to the surrounding residential area. If this issue goes to court, we would be David fighting Goliath. 
All donations are voluntary and go toward legal costs and related expenses incurred by the town and its attorneys in defending the town's zoning ordinances, including costs for preparation and defense against any litigation initiated by or involving the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS, its individual members and or other interested parties in relation to the disputed zoning matter. So there is already the one, you know, intent to sue from the two residents who don't like to drive. So you have that. And then it says donations to this fund are not refundable after this matter has concluded, including any litigation and related appeals. And after all legal costs and related expenses, including but not limited to legal fees, judgments, awards, and other associated costs have been paid in full. Any money remaining in the town of Fairview zoning defense fund will be donated to the Friends of Fairview First Responders Association, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So there it is. What do you think of that, um, RFM? A small town asking for funds to defend itself against the LDS church. I have not heard of this before. I think it's a great idea. I do think it, um, I don't know, people who, I don't want to get in the way of the town or anything, but it would make sense to me to wait until the church files at least a notice of intent to sue before donating to something. Otherwise, they wouldn't need the money before then. Yep. And, and that makes me believe that behind the scenes, unbeknownst to us, um, that they are being contacted and they are probably being let know that this is inevitable. Otherwise, I don't think they would take the step. So I think probably behind the scenes with the, you know, I think it's happening. So we'll keep you all updated. But a lot of people have reached out to me and asked, how can I help support this town? If you would like to help support financially, here it is. Here's the fund. They're just, you know, they're just trying to get started. So, all right. So your, your tithing to the church will be fighting it out with your donations to yeah. their view. Isn't it funny? And so many people feel that way. Now that they don't pay tithing, they really do look at what they can do. And something like that is mighty satisfying, isn't it? A little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> Oh, I think that's funny. I did reach out to Lone Mountain. Um, a judge is supposed to vote on whether something is going to be dismissed or not. And we have not gotten that information yet. But again, people don't realize once the city council says no or says yes, it's still not a done deal. These citizens continue to you know, push things forward as far as they can in the courts. And again, this is, these are private citizens. And I always, the funny thing is that temples are always built in affluent areas. And what do you find in affluent areas? Affluent people and pretty smart people. And a lot of them lawyers themselves. And this is why you have these citizens groups that can really, really get in there and, you know, try to do what's going to be best for their town. So, all right, let's move forward. Okay. Summit, New Jersey. Now this was just announced at conference just a few days ago, right? And there was an article that came out where the church was glowingly describing, you know, this is going to be amazing. The members in Summit, they can't, they can't wait. Somebody on social media was, okay, I put this post up and somebody wrote back, the members are thrilled. And then somebody else wrote, yes, both of them are. Anyway, sorry. Summit, that was New just, Jersey. But, but in the article, of uh, Summit, New Jersey, New Jersey said, uh, we don't know anything about this. Uh, this. This is news to us. We have no idea. And that's kind of the MO. I remember, I think it was the Linden Temple or was it the Orem Temple? Anyway, even here in Utah, town councils, you don't need to know. It's on a need to know basis. You don't need to know. So unless you're doing your due diligence, you're looking at your zoning, you're seeing if high density, if residential is being changed to high density, you know, if you're looking for things like that, you are not going to know, even if you're like a, you know, city planner or somebody that's on the town council. So I just thought it was really funny. There was a little paragraph there that said, Summit County Town Commissioner said, we don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know? which is funny. Now, if you're China, and you don't know what they're talking about. You have the power to say, as we reported on last time, not so much because that temple, the Chinese temple that was announced oh a couple of years ago has been taken off the list. It doesn't gotcha. exist anymore. So, but I had to laugh here because again, I went to AI and I said, New Jersey temple. And if you can see that closely, it's like a pizza parlor on the bottom floor. <laughs> that is so funny. And I can look at that and say, see temple and I see pizza. Yeah. Spelled various ways. Yeah, you know, they, they AI is getting better, but it does have some nonsensical words. That's true. But I would totally uh, be on board with a pizza parlor temple. I think that would be absolutely So would I. And you know, the rendition that AI does of a temple, it looks like a cathedral. Uh -huh. This looks like a really, really nice 
church. It this does. looks like the kind of church that most people wouldn't mind so much having yeah. go up in their neighborhoods. The problem is, is that the LDS churches, the temples of the LDS church don't look so much like cathedrals as they look like Masonic temples with pointy tops. Yeah. And, They're and really the real not as attractive as the LDS church thinks they are. Exactly. And the real difference is at night when they're just lit, when they're just lit up. I mean, I live in an area where you can see several at the same time and, and they're not awe inspiring. You don't want to go toward them like a moth to the flame. You're like, <laughs> what the hell is that? I mean, seriously, that's more the reaction. It really is. And it's interesting to me, the AI now, um, because I've been making these AI temples for a while now, they tend to put crosses on top. And I think that's because you know, out there, crosses are now more acceptable with the LDS church and they're using them on Google Maps and all of that. So, ooh, I have a joke for you. I told this on the Mormon News Roundup. What is a Mormon's favorite kind of pizza? I don't know. Pepperoni. <laughs> I'm That's sorry. Funny. It's so freaking corny, but I thought it was Did you come really up with that? No, I didn't actually. I found that joke. <laughs> Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Yeah. You, you uh, can look it up in the pronunciation guide in the back of the Book of Mormon. That's right. I know. Why is it Maroon Eye? Why I have that? no idea. No, it isn't. There's, I know. No, there's nobody I've ever known who has come to the Book of Mormon, independent of Mormonism, looked at that word and said Moroni. Yep. They say no, no, Moroni. No, no. Or so my mom joined the church when she was 21 years old in Austria. She was on a Fulbright scholarship to study zoology. And so she's in Austria. Wow. She, she meets Mormons on the boat over. And by the time she gets to the dock, the missionaries are waiting for her. And so she reads everything and learns everything in German. Right. But she thought it was Morani. Morani. That's what she thought it was, which Maybe that's a little more accurate. I'm not sure. But yeah, <laughs> nobody who independently comes to it would naturally and linguistically say Moroni. More mun, more yeah. run. More, yep, pepperoni. So mm -hmm. there you go. It's my favorite right. kind of pizza, by the way. What? New Jersey deep dish pepperoni pizza. That's right, pepperoni. They better start that now because the temples are coming. All right. Um, let's see. We have two more little tidbits. I think we're going to end a little early tonight without Bill. You know, he's so loquacious, right? It's not us. It's Bill. He's the yes. one. Just da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By the way, is um, Angry Alice, is she still asleep? Because could you pick her up and just show her to our audience? They love Angry like Alice. This. And she's on the floor. Alice. Yeah, she's on the floor? Laying upside down. Yeah. Okay. As dogs do. No, she's really cute, but she is very angry. So, and this I thought was interesting. This in, in the path of Hurricane Milton, right? Are steeples important to God after all? Because here is a steeple that fell off a building in the path of the hurricane. Nobody was hurt. We're thankful for that. But maybe rethink that, right? They're just kind of targets. How many steeples have we heard of or Temple Moroni's that have been struck by lightning? Right. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And losing the, the horn and everything, the trumpet. Yep. Yep. This could be God weighing in on the issue. Oh, don't even go there because so many people believe that that opened the seventh seal, right? When Moroni's trumpet fell. You know that. You did a whole podcast on that. I do so many podcasts. I can't yeah. keep track of all the this crazy This was a big trip. one. It was the I'm trumpet sorry. fall Mormon and fleet. then it opens the dispensations and then the missionaries will be called back. COVID. I know the, I have lots of friends that are, have the apocalyptic mindset. And so I have to keep tabs on this. You know, I apologize. I forgot. This is the Mormon newscast, not Mormonism after dark. No, you I, know I have trouble keeping track of all the crazy I, things that I, Mormons believe. I feel like it's a little bit of both this time. So anyway, steeple on the ground, maybe rethink safety. Okay. Let's see if we can get this video to play. This was another interesting thing that popped up over the weekend and we'll see what we think of this. That, if also, we can get to that also looks like a scene that last one. That also yeah. kind of looks like a scene out of the omen. It kind of does. I know a lot, of, a lot of people, there with the people right through through his heart. Exactly. A lot of people express going into a church building like after hours. And there is that feeling sort of like the omen, sort of a scary, unsettling feeling. I've had that too, going into just a church building, stake center after hours for some reason. I used to have to practice the organ, right? I wonder if any of you can relate to that, where you have to go like after hours and you're in there playing. And well, as long as you're not playing oh. box, toccata and fugue in D minor, you're oh. okay. I was playing the Bohemian Rhapsody. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> it was the early 80s, man. 